We finally have the next trailer and release date for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth along with an interview with the developers at Square Enix. First up will be my reaction to the trailer and then I'll go over the interview questions. Timestamps will be in the description if you want to jump straight to the interview. Really quick, I'd like to thank everybody that watched my video talking about Final Fantasy XVI. If you haven't gotten a chance to watch it, I'll have it linked in the description. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well. Now let's get into it. Let's jump in, check it out. The world's ending. We can save At it. At least, that's what everyone's saying. That sounds like Aerith's mama. The sky, I don't like it. Oh, Junon! Fire, sir. Welcome to the new world. There's Rufus. Order. Marching minigame? Just close your eyes and listen. Tell me you can't hear Cosmo that. Canyon? Rallying cry. The planet runs out of energy. It and everything on it dies. We can overcome our fate. Am I the Flashbacks. same as these monsters? Am I even human? Okay, we're looking for Sephiroth. Think you can find him? Ooh. Oh, we got cases? Sephiroth, you see. So you heeded the call too, did you? What are you talking about? As the buggy see, leaving the uh, gold saucer. Chocobos that can climb and fly. Together. Cloud and Coast of the Soul. Chance of finding Sephiroth. Yeah, I ask because I suspect they're soldiers suffering from cellular degradation. Do not be deceived. You know the truth. Trust in me. Sephiroth! The Midgar Zolomon? Priscilla boss fight. Come on. Team up attacks. More team up attacks. On me. More team up attacks and a flashback. Oh, we got Alexander, baby. Don't know what that summon is. Odin. Golden saucer. Look, look. There's that dude. I'm assuming that's the owner. Chocobo racing. Mini games, mini games, mini games. Excuse me. Could you look after my friend just for a bit? Back to June on. Man, this game looks so good. The weapon? To the life strangers. And to the weapons? Appear when the planet is in grave danger. Who dares disturb Oh, we got Vincent, slumber. baby. It's upon us. The reunion. Oh. When worlds merge. I'm waiting, Cloud. And so are we. Rebirth. February 29th. That is actually right around the corner. Pre-order now. Yeah, we're gonna definitely go back through this trailer and look at some key points. But, oh man, I'm so hyped. Put in the comments if you're hyped for this game, if you're really looking forward to it. Obviously, Final Fantasy 16 was a bit of a disappointment and a letdown for some people. I know I understand some people liked it. That was great. I'm happy for you. I wasn't necessarily one of those people, so this is what I'm truly looking forward to. So let's look over the PlayStation blog that was released along with the trailer. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth developer interview reveals fresh gameplay details as new trailer debuts at State of Play. So this should be really interesting. Can you explain what we're seeing for the combat system here? Has it remained untouched since Final Fantasy VII Remake or have you altered anything for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Hamaguchi replied, I want to highlight the new synergy moves most from the battle system. New mechanics allow players to use synergy commands and abilities at any time by using a gauge charge in a similar manner as limit breaks. Players will feel relationships and bonds that have developed between characters even more so than in the previous game. We've also added skill trees as a new element of character growth. You can unlock synergy abilities through the skill trees too. Many new materia and new abilities not seen in the first game will be available as well, so players will have even more options to customize and build character loadouts to their own taste. So what I take from this is they're probably going to have a system very similar to the weapon system in Final Fantasy VII Remake 
where you know your weapons would have their own abilities and things you could build off of and essentially it was the sp system where you could pump skill points into your weapons to give them better abilities and make them stronger i don't know if these skill trees are going to be you know you have to choose you'll miss out on one ability if you go with this one but it released in february 29th it is right around the corner so it will, it will not be far before we get to figure all that out Next up, viewers got a glimpse of Red 13's combat as part of the new trailer. Players are now able to control him directly. What can they expect in terms of abilities that makes him distinct and a great party member in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Battles? The development team challenged themselves to give Red 13 a new play style that felt different from the other characters. Red 13 doesn't just have an ATB gauge, but also his own unique revenge gauge mechanic. His revenge gauge charges when he guards against enemies' attacks, and he can spin that charge to use various abilities once the gauge is full. We've designed Red 13 as a new type of character that requires players to strike a balance between offense strategy and using ATB gauge and defensive strategy using the revenge gauge. Well, I guess this is going to be really interesting to get our hands on him because on one hand, you have to attack to build ATB. It'll grow very slowly on its own, of course, but you have to attack to really charge it up quickly. But with Red 13 to charge his revenge gauge, you have to play defense. So that's going to be really interesting how Red 13 is going to work. It looks like he's going to be more of a tank. Kind of how I read this. It'll be interesting to see how strong his revenge gauge uh, skills are versus his ATB gauge skills. But that sounds really cool. Moving on down, we have seen Red 13 and Kate Sith show as playable characters in the footage released. Also has another character that looks like Vincent. It is Vincent. doesn't just look like him. So will he be playable as well? Will the party expand further too? Nomura. The original party members are all present in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It says they're all present. We haven't seen Sid, but he just said they're all present. In the previous title, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Red 13 became a, an accompanying member in the second half of the game, but will become an official playable party member at the start of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Similarly, there are characters who are accompanying members in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that will become official party members in the next title. Really? So does that mean Vincent might not be playable? Similarly, there are characters who are accompanying members in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that will become official party members in the next title. So if we got Red 13 that's playable and Kate Sis playable, is it trying to say, and we know Yuffie's going to be playable, is it trying to say that Vincent and maybe Sid even aren't playable in the next game? Maybe it's just Sid? Since they haven't shown him yet, maybe Sid's the character that isn't necessarily playable out the gate, but... I'm not really a big fan of this. Why would you... I mean, if you're going to have the party members in the game, don't just have them as a company party members. Have them as full-blown, you can control them. I almost view that portion of the game as incomplete if you're not going to let people actually control them as a party member. Like Red 13, that was fairly disappointing that we couldn't control him in Remake, but everyone let it slide for the most part because you were basically at the end of the game at that point anyway. And viewers caught a glimpse of Alexander and Odin. Can we expect returning summons from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? And will any summons from Remake return? Hamaguchi, there will be many other summons in the game. In addition to those have already been revealed in our previous videos. With some also returning from Final Fantasy VII Remake. In fact, the lineup of summons have actually been fleshed out over and above the previous game. With new extended side content based on a summon who did not feature in the original Final Fantasy VII and even more besides. So it's, maybe it's that whatever that was in between Alexander and Odin that I don't recognize it. If you know what it is, please put it in the comments what summon it was. But maybe that's what they're talking about and it's going to be a side quest to go get them. Moving on, sneaking, sneaking into the original Junon saw players partake in another unique minigame. We saw the parade and many other mini games in the newly revealed trailer. So will the same mini game from the original Final Fantasy VII be playable? Yes, the same mini game will be playable, but we've greatly increased its scope and compared with what is in the original Final Fantasy VII. In the original, Cloud sneaks into the units practicing in the parade and joins on the performance. 
But in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, he becomes the leader of that unit and can customize the composition of the soldiers participating in the parade. The chosen unit composition will alter the performance, and it goes without saying that this also affects how the minigame is played. The parade to celebrate the inauguration of Rufus as the new president of Shinra is the climax of the first half of the original game. Also, the development team really was enthusiastic about making the details for it. This is one of the moments I hope players enjoy the most. Okay, so I did have a question of why he was in the front rather than the back, but I guess it is he's just become the leader. But how does he sneak in and become the leader of the group without them knowing, hey, this is the guy we're coming after? Regardless, it looks pretty cool. I cannot wait to see June on and everything they're doing for it. You can see the airship up here. The high wind. Moving on down, and speaking of mini games, we got a fun glimpse of Gold Saucer and its own mini games. How do Final Fantasy VII Rebirth versions of these differ from the originals? Scroll down a little bit. I think there are a lot of fans who point out the number of variety of mini games as one of the draws of the original Final Fantasy VII. But for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we have gone all out and created a huge number of mini games on a scale that surpasses even the original. Many of these mini games can be experienced in the main story, but we have lots of unique games and challenges that appear as part of side quest stories you can find as you explore the world map. The world map. That's what we like to hear. There might well be players who get so caught up in the fun of the mini games they finally aren't making progress in the main story. The mini games in the original, they were fun. I mainly done the battle arena because you got a lot of good items from it and rewards, so. That was mine along with obviously the chocobo racing because you had to improve your chocobo to get a gold one. Gold Saucer is another iconic locale that players will be eager to visit. How have you approached redesigning this amusement park? Players will first visit Gold Saucer in the middle section of the game but are then free to come back at any time they like. In order to create the motivation to make them want to come back, we designed the park to provide a changing and ever more wonderful experience with each visit. So new minigames are added and harder difficulty modes are unlocked as the main story progresses, giving you even more to do there. It is not just the minigames either, and parts of the gold saucer seen in the main story also have been fully remade and upgraded too. So you can expect great things from it. The gold saucer is going to be something that I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do with it, especially with the power of all the consoles now. And how big can they actually make this world? Because they say you can come back at any time. Are we going to have fast travel where you can fast travel back to the Gold Saucer? Or are you going to actually have to travel to make your way back? That is something I'm actually interested in. Is Because there's a few things in here that kind of talk about how big the world is. And we saw in the trailer you can fly with a chocobo and you can scale mountains with a chocobo. I don't see you being able to do that unless the world is pretty large. So... Interested to see if they're going to implement some sort of fast travel system in the game. The trailer also shows moments of the party exploring lush exterior open areas. Do those large areas work within the context of gameplay and the story? Once the team leaves Midgar, Cloud and the team's major objective in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is to follow and track down Sephiroth across the expansive world they find themselves in. We've put a lot of emphasis on exploration-focused game design within this title, and we wanted to create that feeling of going on a journey while traveling around the world in pursuit of evidence of Sephiroth's movements. So, right there is another example of, they're basically saying that this thing is going to be massive. Which I'm here for. I want to get lost in the world. I, want to, I would love to deviate from the main story and get lost in side quests. Obviously, in Final Fantasy 16, the side quest sucked. So hopefully that's something that's an improvement. We don't want side quests where it's go talk to this person, back to this person, back here, and you're done. We don't want any of that. Actually have something where you're traveling around, you're exploring. Give us areas in the game, which I do think this is going to do, that aren't part of the main story. Give us something that we can go find, we can explore, give us a cave, that we don't have to go in if we don't want to, but if we find it and we can go down there, we can find some materia in there, that would be absolutely awesome. That was a big downfall of Final Fantasy 16 was the world map was, all, it was very linear in the sense of there was no extra areas that didn't pertain to the main story. Everything was very story focused. It just made for a really dull experience as far as their world goes, in my opinion. 
I know a lot of people love the game and they love the way it was played, and that's great. But this right here, what they're describing is what I'm personally looking for. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Do you want a massive open world? Do you want areas that you have to go find? Let's talk about it. Now you're several years into remaking the iconic locations of Final Fantasy VII, and with Final Fantasy VII Remake being so successful, do you feel less pressure to match fan expectations when reimagining beloved areas and moments? As Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will take players to various locations across the world, we need to recreate the massive Final Fantasy VII world map that would also incorporate places such as towns and dungeons within itself. To do this, we dug deeply into the feeling of each region and reflected that in the graphics, creating areas that look and feel quite diverse. On top of that, we designed chocobos unique to each region that have their own abilities, mountain chocobos that can climb sheer cliffs and sky chocobos that can fly. Awesome. So players will need to utilize their chocobos fully to explore each area. I hope players have a lot of fun with this aspect of exploration. They just keep stacking and stacking and stacking on top of each other that this is a massive open world game and it's going to be something that I think everyone is going to really enjoy. Final Fantasy VII Remake offered new interpretations of classic locations and moments as well as entirely new ones that enrich the game. Is there a similar balance in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? As with the previous game, we've strived for the right balance between old and new scenes in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but we also try to take on more new challenges than we did in Final Fantasy VII Remake with some of the new scenes. I am confident that these new scenes will be widely enjoyable for fans and newcomers alike. This is basically just saying they've expanded the story like kind of like they did in the first game. They extended some scenes, they added some dialogue, a little more character development, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm all for new scenes and expanding on the Final Fantasy VII that we know. What is the function of the world map in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? The world map is vast and expansive, so not all of the locations on it will be used in the main story alone. That is exactly what we wanted to hear. In fact, volume-wise, the amount of side content in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is nearly double that of the main quest content. Oh, wow. Players who want to enjoy Final Fantasy VII setting on an even deeper level can explore all the corners of the world. Discovering many different and exciting experiences such as new stories, battles, and mini games to play. It will also be possible to return to any of the regions in the world even after the main quest moves on from that area. So you don't have to worry about leaving things behind or unfinished. So I wonder if it's going to be a big open world or if each... Um, region is going to have its own like massive zone. That may be the way they do it. Given this is a direct continuation of Final Fantasy VII Remake, can players port over their save file and their character builds and continue their journey into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? We have announced that the Final Fantasy VII Remake project will be a trilogy and that each entry will be a standalone game in its own right. Because of this, each game's balancing is done independently and at players' levels and abilities will not carry over from one game to the next. However, we can create some special bonuses for fans who played the previous game, allowing them to start with a little something extra. Okay, so that's cool. And I'm fine with it. You know, I, we don't have to... It's not one big game. It's three separate games, so it's cool. What was the concept behind the new trailer? Every trailer has a specific purpose since this is the second installment of the Final Fantasy VII, VII Remake project. There are people who have played the previous game or enthusiastic fans who follow the built-in mysteries. But for newcomers or those who are simply interested in the Final Fantasy VII series, we wanted to include a full overview of what kind of experience they will have with this remake project. So there is less of a mysterious pretense to story this time, but you can look forward to the next trailer. They definitely gave fans a lot to discuss when it comes to the trailer. It mainly focused on the team up attacks, the mini games and traversal from what I could tell. They also wanted to show off the landscape and the world to a certain extent. We don't really know how big the open world is, but obviously they keep telling us it's massive. So I'm here for it. 
There was a scene with Cloud and Sephiroth fighting each other, but will the player get to control Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Great question. If you played the original Final Fantasy VII, I'm sure you can guess which scene I'm talking about. You will be able to control Sephiroth in the same scene in this title as you did in the original. So it's just a flashback when you're on your way to the reactor, but being able to control Sephiroth is going to be pretty sweet. The Gold Saucer appears in the newly released trailer, but will players be able to enjoy the much-anticipated date scene on the Ferris Wheel 2? Naturally, this is one of the major highlights of the Gold Saucer, so it is included in the game. Please look forward to how it will appear in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth with its high-resolution visuals. <laughs> nice. Oh, we're at the last question. Final Fantasy VII Remake showed the story up until the escape of Midgar, but what point does Final Fantasy VII Rebirth take us up to? We have mentioned this a few times before, but the order in which you can explore the locations is not the same as the original Final Fantasy VII, and there are some shifts in the order. For example, Wutai, one of the major locations, is not part of the route of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and will be visited in the next one. Although there are some changes in the order of the locations, the locations depicted in this title extend up to the Forgotten Capital, I'm assuming that's Forgotten City, where the greatest fate of Final Fantasy VII awaits you. All they're telling us here is this will be the last part of the game, I think. Instead of you going early, you will go after Meteor is summoned. She will say her prayer. I think the we that's when the weapons will wake up. And I think Sephiroth will still inevitably kill her. But I think that's all they're saying here. Instead of doing this early and Aerith dying in the first third of the game, she's actually going to be in your party at least through the entirety of this one. But I think she will still inevitably die. You can't, you can't change that. I think it would make a lot of fans upset if, somehow or another they did not kill her and if she survives somehow i don't think uh now if there's some way she survives in zach's timeline that's cool but in the main timeline of final fantasy 7 she's i mean she's got to die that is the way the game was that's the way the game needs to be but let me know what you think in the comments do you think the Forgotten City is going to be the last place you visit and will Sephiroth inevitably still kill Aerith off my guess is yes, but put your answer down in the comments. I'd love to talk about it. And that's going to wrap it up. I'd love to hear what you all think, so please comment down below and we'll talk about it. Also, the blog post will be linked in the description if you want to go check it out. And I don't want to forget to mention that I am doing a giveaway at 1,000 subs. I'm giving away three $100 gift codes, a platform of your choice. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed to the channel. I appreciate everybody checking these out. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. Later.